Insurmountable is a turn-based strategy mountaineering game from the developers Bite Rockers Games, who already have a few rather well-received titles under their belt. In Insurmountable, you get to pick from just three characters. Each has their own set of bonus attributes, equipment and limitations, but essentially they all move the same way on the mountain. There are three mountains in Insurmountable, and each one has three routes that you can pick from and three levels of difficulty. To unlock Mountains 2 and 3, you will first need to have successfully reached the summit and returned safely from the mountain at least once. The mountain is represented as a 3D hexagonal peak, which reaches pretty high up into the sky. To move, you simply click on a tile that you want to move to and click a second time in order to confirm it. Each step that you take towards the summit has either a positive or negative effect on your energy, your warmth levels, your oxygen levels, or your overall health, and even your sanity. Sanity, I think, is an interesting choice, replacing the more obvious food and drink option we normally see in games. They are instead sort of amalgamated into energy and warmth. There is a night and day cycle, and time is recorded in the bottom left-hand corner. Every action that you take increases the clock, and whilst it is possible to climb at night, visibility is often dramatically reduced. Each day's weather is also represented here, and ranges from normal, fine to stormy weather. The character you selected and their equipment will dictate which of your vital stats are affected most and by how much, depending on weather conditions. As you progress further up the mountain, you will find numerous special tiles. If you can reach them safely, they provide a written encounter or experience of some kind. This could be dead mountaineers, which you could search for provisions, dangerous animal encounters, camps, old shacks, or even long-forgotten supply crates. Each time you have an encounter, there is an opportunity for an event to occur, where you get to choose the course of action. However, every action has consequences. Usually, this will include time taken, thereby processing the in-game daytime, it will reduce your energy levels and even potentially your warmth, depending on the weather conditions and especially if it's a cold day. Sometimes these instances will reward you with additional supplies. These could be tents, which have a maximum number of uses, which I believe to be three unless you find one which is damaged and then it will be less. Food, which will boost your energy, or perhaps warm clothing or special equipment that can help you transition certain terrains quicker. My personal favourite is the flask of tea. Well, I am an Englishman after all. These encounters are not always positive, however. Sometimes you will sustain an injury, or possibly even worse. Any injury that you sustain will probably stay with you for a short period of time, and it will slow down your progress. Now, this is actually represented by more time passing on the clock for each tile that you move, rather than physically seeing yourself move slower. It is worth exploring these areas, especially when below 6,000 feet, and I'll explain why that is in a minute as you can get XP points, and these allow you to level up your character from three seemingly random selected perks, not all of which are injury-free to you, though. Level up enough and you can unlock new perks that help you to transition the mountain more quickly and potentially more safely. The second most dangerous aspect of mountaineering, though, is the terrain itself. You've got hidden fissures, falling rocks, or even landslides, and as you choose your route, you will often come across dangerous tiles, indicated by a little exclamation mark. Now, there is no guarantee that these tiles will actually be harmful for you, and you can sometimes pass them without incident at all. The adventurer character even has a perk called Careful Steps, which will allow you to pass by these dangerous tiles without incident for four in-game hours. Now, like all perks, there is quite a long cooldown period before you can use it again. By far, the most dangerous item on the mountain is oxygen, or lack thereof. As soon as you climb above 6,000 feet, you are in what they call the death zone. And as the name suggests, the entire time that you are there, you are slowly asphyxiating. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to discover an oxygen mask along the way, and it's pretty essential, actually, that you do. 
Now, you can find oxygen masks or oxygen bottles, and I dare say there are some other options there as, as well, which I have yet to discover. But essentially, oxygen is your biggest, biggest foe, and it might even be necessary to climb back down the mountain in order to build your oxygen levels up before you try and ascent the final climb. Now what I've discovered is that uh, oxygen is very difficult to regain once you've lost it, recovering much slower than any of the other essential perks. Now maybe this needs tweaking in the game I don't know, but I have tried to ascend and get back down from the mountain three times now using all three characters, and every single time it's oxygen that kills me. So on that somewhat morbid note, I'm just going to wrap up this review and I'm going to say that this is a beautiful looking game with great character animations for this type of genre and it's a lot of fun to play. It's quite challenging and I like that as well. My only real gripe with the game is that the stats section at the bottom gets in the way of watching the animations and often I find it gets in the way when I'm trying to look around and find a safe route down. Now it would be great if perhaps it was just collapsible or it was moved or I don't know. I'm sure there's something they could do to make it less in your face. And if I could, and if it were possible that I could have one thing added to the game, then it would be additional animations for things like falling rocks, landslides, or even when you fall into a crevasse, I'd like to see the floor open up and you slip down into it, with the map shape actually changing to reflect these events happening. Quite often I pass by a fissure and slip down, but when the event has finished I find that I'm still stood in the exact same location I was before. It would be great if you actually fell down and you were maybe at the next level down or something like that. No matter what, Insurmountable is a fantastic single player experience, which in my opinion has the right sort of gameplay to potentially one day be evolved or changed or enhanced to become a multiplayer game. But even without any of the suggestions implemented here, this is great fun to play and challenging enough to be really quite rewarding too, or at least I'm sure it will be when I actually manage to get to the top of the mountain and back down again. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, until next time, goodbye.